Hey, and welcome back to Ontario Cryptids. Today's story takes us to the island of Okinawa, Japan. This is the story told many years later about the history of Okinawa and the White Witch. But before we get to the story, if you have your own story you would like to share, then forward your encounter stories to ontariocryptids at gmail.com. And if you're enjoying these encounter stories, then hit that like button and subscribe. Okay, go grab your favorite beverage or snack and sit back and relax. This story takes place in the 1980s on the island of Okinawa, Japan. I want to point out that the tiny boxes you see on the very bottom left-hand corner and the top left-hand corner, those are all crypts. In certain places around the world where it's impossible to dig, crypts are used to bury the dead. So I just wanted to give you a, a view uh, or a feel of what the area would look like because of the story that I'm about to tell. In the early 80s, I lived in Okinawa, Japan. My dad thought that seeing the world would be an adventure that would help my brother and I become better men. And I have to say, I think he was right. Being in the military showed me cultures many would never get to experience. And I am thankful for every experience that life gave to me even the scary ones. While we lived in Japan, my father wanted us to have a fully immersive experience, so he chose to move us into a small Japanese neighborhood off base. We lived in a little house at the top of an enormous hill in a cul-de-sac that overlooked, I kid you not, part of a huge zoo on one side and a fairly large cemetery. Our particular house was set far above the monkey habitats, about a mile downhill. Between us and those habitats was nothing but thick Indiana Jones-style jungle. Jungle that the neighborhood kids and I would tromp through endlessly, ignoring the local warnings about poisonous snakes and ancient untripped mines from World War II. We were the only American family living in that cul-de-sac, completely surrounded by Japanese families, and it was amazing. The kids loved us, and although we couldn't communicate through language very well, we understood each other perfectly, well, most of the time. Opposite us was an older couple with a lush garden surrounding their property. The older woman wanted us to call her Mama San and she had us helping her garden whenever she could coax us over with green tea and chocolate banana cookies. We loved her. She was so welcoming and generous, as was everyone else, actually. We lived in a wonderful neighborhood. The only drawback to Mama San's home, however, was that she directly overlooked the cemetery, and that cemetery was unlike any cemetery I had ever seen before. Because Okinawa is an island, burials don't happen very often. Instead, above-ground crypts are built, many of them built into the sides of hills that make up the island. The crypts are large, made of huge arcs of polished stone set over a large square of that stone, which has a square insert cut into the middle of it for the coffin to be placed inside. Once inside the square, is inset with another piece of polished stone just inside, leaving a kind of shelf on the outside so offerings can be made to the lost loved ones. Yen, food, flowers, incense, and are some of the offerings given. Below Mama Sen's house was a valley that swooped back up into another hill opposite her home. That valley and both hills were covered with these crypts, and spider webbing up and down through the crypts were various stone steps, pathways that were old and badly maintained. It was quite a sight. 
One evening, Mama Sen asked me to come visit with her alone. She had something to show me, but it was only for me as the older brother. Intrigued and a bit proud, I agreed. She took me to the back of her garden and sat me on a thick wooden bench that was carved with scenes of fishermen and men with swords and told me she had a story to tell. Mama Sen then disappeared for a few minutes and soon returned with a tray that held hot green tea and sweet rice cakes. Sitting next to me, she smiled and commented on the colors of the evening sky as the sun began to lower. Mama Sen said she had seen me, my brother, and some of the other kids daring each other to follow those stair paths down into the cemetery. You have to understand, the path from our little home area down to the cemetery consists of hundreds of steps, many broken or cracking, in and out of bushes, and at a steep incline. It would be dangerous for anybody, but the real test was seeing how long we could take walking through the crypt at night. Mama Sen wanted to explain why that was a bad idea. Many years ago, during the war, Americans were thought to be devils, monsters that would murder innocent citizens for no reason other than to kill. That fear was the product of wartime propaganda used to encourage young men to military service and farmers to fight alongside them. But many didn't. Many ran. And with nowhere to go, nowhere to hide, hundreds of Japanese citizens hurled themselves off a cliff rather than face the torture at the hands of their perceived enemy. It was terrifying to hear this. I had no I idea this had happened. I was mortified and hit with such a sadness I started to cry. The sun was setting and the sky went from pink and blue to a deep orange and red. Mama San reached out and held my hand telling me not to worry. This was in the past and the past is something we must always remember so we never go back. She went on with her story. One young woman had followed through with the sacrifice with her two children, but she survived the fall. She was in a coma for months. When she did regain consciousness, she was horrified to realize she was not with her children. They had been buried somewhere in that cemetery below, in an unmarked crypt that held many others. The woman spent days and nights searching the cemetery, crying in pain. The torment of her loss, unbearable, until the day she threw herself into the ocean to hopefully be reunited with her lost family. But they say she never found her children. Her act of suicide doomed her to purgatory. She would remain tortured for eternity. The sun had disappeared and the cemetery drowned in inky blackness, the main path dotted with the dim, broken lights feebly illuminating small areas. Mama San continued, She still wanders the cemetery, she said, looking for her kids. You can hear her crying, and then she pointed down. I didn't want to, but I did. I looked. In the back of the cemetery, in the darkness, there was a white figure, at first a bright white shimmering, moving slowly, kind of shaking. It moved from side to side, like it was moving among the crypts, and you could actually hear the crying. Soft at first, but then low moans and whimpering of pain as it got closer. I was terrified. I wanted to run, but Mama San held my hand and whispered that she wouldn't come up here. We were too far. But that is why we shouldn't go down there after dark. She said many don't know her story and call her the White Witch, which angers her. It's best to stay away. It's best to pray for her. Mama San said she comes out to see her often, hoping one day she will find her salvation. Needless to say, I never went down to that cemetery again. Not once. And I never sat back there with Mama San again, either. 
That was enough for me. I did, however, visit Suicide Hill. It's called Peace Prayer Park now, out of respect. I cried the whole time we were there. I prayed for all the souls and for forgiveness. So many Japanese citizens spoke to us, welcoming us, telling us stories, sharing with us. I didn't feel worthy, and my love for the country and its people was overwhelming. I'll never forget my time there. I'd like to go back to see if she's still there, wandering the graves looking for her children. Wow, on so many levels. I loved, first of all, how you told your story. It was beautifully written. I enjoyed how you set the stage, so to speak, before telling us not only about how you felt, but what had transpired. I loved how Mama San went about warning you not to play in the cemetery. But this was a truly sad story that led this mother haunting a particular cemetery for the rest of her existence. I want to thank you again for allowing me to share your story. It is much appreciated. Thank you so much. So that is going to be it for today. Um, I do want to remind you all if these stories reminded you of any encounters that you may have had that you would like to share, then please forward your stories to ontariocryptids at gmail.com. Your stories can be as anonymous as you would like. I'd love to hear from you soon. Have a fantastic Sunday and we'll see you all next week.